Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My husband secretly shared intimate videos of me online. Now, I'm fighting for justice while he faces prison. Last Friday, I, 34F, spent my evening with my friend obligatory fake name, Katie, 24F from work, as she wanted to discuss something personal with me. I didn't think anything of it, as we have a very personal relationship outside of work as well. As soon as I arrived at her place, the tension in the air was thick. She explained that she wanted to discuss a serious matter with me, but didn't know how to go about it. I told her to just rip the band-aid off and tell me. She told me that she had found two recordings of a woman she believed to be me on a pornographic website. I told her that wouldn't be possible, but she was adamant that I was the woman in the recordings. And she was right. I've never recorded myself naked or having sex with my husband. But there I was in two recordings, one seven minutes long, and the other four minutes both of them recorded in our old bedroom. As I rewatched every second of it, it started to dawn on me that this was my husband's doing. But I pushed that deep down, thinking there must be a reasonable explanation for this. Honestly, I left her place with my mind in complete meltdown. I could barely hear what she was saying, but she did follow up with a text saying she had contacted the website about getting it taken down and that she would help me through this. She also said she was scaring the internet in case there were more videos out there. I came home and pretty much ransacked my house looking for evidence, and I found it. My husband was using hidden spy cameras to record me in my most intimate moments. I then spent hours vomiting, crying, projectile vomiting some more and begging God to just let this be a nightmare. I am a deeply religious and fully veiled Muslim woman, and I've never been with anyone but my husband. All this time, he has been sharing my most intimate moments with the world. I don't know what to think or what to do. I can't look at him or speak to him. I've locked myself in our bedroom, pretending I have COVID. All I do is look up how other people have dealt with getting things removed, and it seems like once it's on the internet, it really is forever. Even if I remove it from this one website, I've been crying nonstop. He truly must be something demonic, as he is right now talking about ordering some of my favorite foods to see if I have an appetite since I have an epidol. I am so unbelievably hurt. I don't know how to share this with my family or how to ask for help. I am crippled with shame, anger, and pain. Answering some questions, my husband's soon-to-be ex-husband and I are of the same religion, ethnicity, and nationality. My family would support me in divorcing him, in fact, they would demand I do so. The laws in my country are secular, but in certain circumstances, they allow for various religious groups to hold their own courts that can enforce rulings. As long as it doesn't impose on or break secular law or civil liberties, I do plan on taking this to both secular court and religious court as I want him punished. I veil by choice, and the vast majority of my fellow countrywomen do not veil. Katie and I do not share the same religion or dress alike, yet we are friends, call it a surprise. Update, I left him as I said I would. He went to work. The movers arrived, we packed my stuff, and we left. The entire time, I was crying to the point that even the movers felt bad for me. I went home, sat my parents and siblings down, and explained the situation. My parents were and still are confused. They are elderly and fragile and don't understand the internet. They just keep saying, okay, let's talk to the people, and it will be gone but my siblings understand. They are angry, sad, and heartbroken on my behalf. My siblings and brother-in-laws took me home, and we waited for him. While well, we had a conversation with him, he denied everything at first, but my brothers were firm with him, and he started to be more truthful. He said he did it because he was depressed, had a porn addiction, and didn't think anyone would see it. He said he posted only a few videos. When we asked him to be specific, he said he posted anywhere from five to eight. We had him take them down, but who knows how many times they had been downloaded or shared. In that moment, I also found out he had a secret phone and had been cheating on me with random women and sex workers. All this time, I thought he was working hard, but nope, he was out disgracing himself and betraying our marriage. At some point, he convinced us he needed to use the bathroom and he somehow managed to call his mother. She arrived at our home with his brother and cousins. There was a commotion as they were angry at the treatment of their family member. Things calmed down enough to explain to them what he had done. His mother fainted. She is elderly and not in the greatest health condition. We called for an ambulance. My neighbor had also called the police, and I was arrested by the time the ambulance arrived to take care of my mother-in-law. I spent the evening locked up. I hadn't exactly had a polite conversation with him. So, yes, I was arrested for assaulting him, specifically slapping him, and he refused to press charges. I got released the next morning and went home to my parents. I cried some more because my parents kept crying. A few days later, I spoke to some lawyers my sister had contacted, as they had experience with non-consensual material being posted online. They have been handling things with the police, as I did press charges, and they are dealing with the websites. I have also started the process of divorce. I went to the clinic and got tested, and luckily, he didn't give me anything so far. But I have another test scheduled just to make sure. I have spoken to his mother, and she apologized to me even though it's not her fault. She told me she understood why I wanted him punished. She asked that I let the law handle it rather than take matters into my own hands or have him hurt. He's in hiding. 
but he still calls and texts me from random numbers. He still lies and tries to manipulate me. I've just been documenting everything he says and texts. Oh, at this point, everyone knows. I mean, everyone, even little kids. And I feel more humiliated now than I did at first. Final you date. This man has destroyed everything I worked for, completely eroding the little stability and safety I had left. I had to resign from my job, a position I loved and struggled to obtain due to my appearance. The harassment from men, both at work and in public, became unbearable. Some fathers at work even made lewd comments or inappropriate offers, and one even followed me from the dentist and groped me. My husband posted all my personal information online, including my address and contact details, leaving me vulnerable to harassment. Though many people have supported me, former colleagues, neighbors, and even members of my religious community, the voices of perverts and crazies have been louder. Then, my lawyers and investigators uncovered that my husband was drugging me, using my own medication to assault me as I slept. He even bragged about it on online forums with other predators. My soon-to-be ex-husband spread lies, claiming I knew about the cameras and even pressured him into posting the videos, and some people believed him. He also changed his mind about not pressing charges for when I slapped him. Thankfully, the judge and prosecutors saw through his lies, dismissing the case after my lawyers presented evidence that he only pressed charges to cause me harm. But his crimes are still under investigation. I'm not feeling better. He continues to be as cruel as possible, dragging out the divorce by running off his lawyers and delaying every step of the process. The courts granted him extensions because his lawyers dropped him, and it feels like we're constantly starting from scratch. His trial for posting non-consensual material has also been delayed due to his lawyer quitting. On top of all this, my father passed away, and my mother is now in hospice care. At my father's funeral, my husband cornered me while I was alone, trying to apologize and blame me for everything. He admitted that he had always been jealous of me, of my success, and of the fact that I didn't let him control me. He claimed that he turned to addiction because he felt inadequate and wanted to punish me for not conforming to his idea of a submissive wife. He excused his actions, saying he posted the videos out of anger and got addicted to the validation from men online. He even asked for credit for seeking help for his addictions and felt I should take him back. I listened in silence for three hours as he made excuse after excuse, blaming me for his actions. But his honesty meant nothing. I finished cleaning up, got in my car, and went home. I'm still struggling. I've lost a lot of weight and hair due to the stress, and I'm not working. However, several websites have removed the videos and banned him from their platforms, which is one small win. I also obtained a restraining order, and after multiple incidents of him stalking and harassing me, he was finally imprisoned. He's been in prison for over a month now, and I've been granted my divorce. Initially, I wanted to give him everything he asked for, but after his endless delays, I told my lawyers to go all in. They did, and I got everything I wanted and more. This has been the most peaceful month I've had in a long time. Watching him cry in court was oddly satisfying after everything he put me through. I've moved across the country, found a new job, and am slowly rebuilding my confidence. I'm in therapy, and while it's not working just yet, I know it will help in time. Although I've been compensated for the non-consensual material, I'm not delusional. I know that it's still out there somewhere, and there's little I can do to change that. I'm trying to make peace with it. As for my ex-husband, he's facing up to 30 years in prison, and I've heard he attempted suicide and is now in protective custody. He will face the consequences of his actions, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.